So thanks everybody for joining. Uh, my name is Peter Pardo. I'm the uh, customer success manager here at O'Reilly, working with specifically government customers across the, the globe. And uh, I've been here with the company now for 21 years, and I'm very happy that uh, we're meeting today. Actually, it's a great time because we've done lots of changes and upgrades to our platform in recent weeks. And specifically, we did a pretty big one just last week. So it's actually a uh, perfect time to be showing you some of the new things on O'Reilly. So we have been around, O'Reilly has been around now since the 1970s, uh, originally as a Unix book publisher. Um, and over the years, we of course have developed quite a, a large brand of different books on technology and business topics. And then back in uh, 2001, we formed a uh, partnership with uh, Pearson Education to create a uh, online reference library of ebooks basically at the time. Um, eventually we started adding adding more publishers to the ebook uh, library. We started adding videos and things like that. Then uh, about eight years ago, O'Reilly brought out Pearson's interest in what was called Safari Books at the uh, online at the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> And it just became uh, O'Reilly. So the platform became O'Reilly Online Learning. Uh, but we continue to work with, of course, with Pearson and all their publishers like Prentice Hall and Addison Wesley and Cisco Press, Financial Times, so on and so forth, as well as over 200 other publishers and content providers. And what we've done over the last few years is we've really tried to become much, much more of a learning platform and not just a reference library of books. So while we still have thousands and thousands of ebooks it's still our main uh kind of the, the the meat of the of the platform are the books and most of our customers that's usually the most viewed uh, content type we also have uh training videos we have conference videos we have live training courses so these are live events that happen on our platform with live instructors we have labs and sandboxes for folks who like to learn in an interactive sort, we have audio books, we have case studies, um, all sorts of different uh, models of learning because what we've discovered over the years is that everybody likes to learn differently. Some people like to read a book when they're learning <clears throat> a topic or a skill, other people like to watch a video, some people like to take a course, some people like a lab situation where you can get, get hands on. So we try to have something for everybody here. And we're not just technology, uh, we are known for technology topics, obviously programming languages, databases, and things like that. But uh, we also have uh, plenty of content on business and soft skills topics, uh, not only from O'Reilly, but from the many publishers that uh, we partner with. So if you're looking for content on leadership or time management, or maybe uh, finance, accounting, uh, managing teams and coaching and all sorts of things like that diversity, we have plenty of topics on that as well. So we've gotten uh, lots of upgrades and tweaks to the platform and the look and feel over the last couple of weeks, like I mentioned. So here, uh, and actually a lot of this, I've just been seeing for the first time myself over the last few days. So we went from a main page that was more focused on taking the learner directly into a lot of the different learning formats that we have on O'Reilly. And what we've done very, very recently is made it much more personalized. So here you'll see lots of, you'll see your O'Reilly. Um, so here I can go and look at things that I recently have been investigating on the platform. So here are some courses and books that I've been recently looking at. I can go right to my playlist page from here and see playlists that I've created or playlists that I have followed. Um, there's my live events page, so I can see any live events that I have registered for. I don't have any right now, or I can look at uh, recordings of live events that I've taken recently. So that's all right here from the main page. Uh, any content that I've highlighted, you know, it's directly from here. I can go right directly to that section of that book and see that little snippet that I have uh, highlighted. So again, a lot of the, the personalization is right here on the main page, pick up where I left off. So this was the last resource that I was in on the platform. So I can go directly to that particular book that I was last in. Uh, obviously I had not opened that and looked at any content otherwise it would have taken me right to the page that I was reading. Uh, here is some recommended content based on things that I've been looking at on our platform based on topics that I've picked out. 
based on recommendations, based on my history. Okay, here is a featured playlist. This is usually where our editorial staff will put something uh, that is trending or popular on our platform. And then across the top, so many of you might remember that we used to have a left-hand navigation bar. So we did away with that a few months back and we went with more of this top-loaded look and feel. Uh, here's the search bar. This will be on top of basically every page on the platform now. So regardless of whether you're on our main page or in a book or in a video, uh, you'll have the search bar up here in case you wanted to exit out of that particular piece of content and go search for something else from there. We have our topics button up here. So this will allow you to pick from any main topic area. Okay, so like if you're interested in machine learning or AI, okay, you can also break it down into more, you know, subtopics here and choose to follow any of them. So ChatGPT obviously is like the big thing right now. So if you wanted to investigate ChatGPT, here I can click follow, I will then follow that particular topic and the platform will then make recommendations to me in chat gpt so here we have some content here that's being recommended to me in chat gpt it's always a good idea for folks who especially the first time they uh, set up an o'reilly account to pick out topics that they're most interested in because then the platform will recommend content to you in those areas I mean, it's very easy to search for things here too, but with over 70,000 resources on the platform, uh, getting those regular recommendations is a really good idea and uh, a, a great way to just not have to search too far and wide and get recommended new and, and all sorts of more granular here as you, you know, maybe you're more interested in book content. So you can tell the platform to uh, recommend to you book content in those topics that you choose to follow, that sort of thing. So you can really personalize it uh, based on your interest level. And then you have the start learning. So this basically replaces uh, the main page that we used to have where we would show you all of those different learning formats uh, on the main page and you can actually scroll down and check them out. Now here we have included them in this like little menu up here. So here you'll see live events, okay, the link directly to our books page, interactive learning courses, certification and O'Reilly answers. So if we were to go to live events, that would take us to our live events page. And from here you'll see, so here, like we saw on the main page here are the two tabs. So your events, these are events that I have coming up that I have pre-registered for. So you'll see here, I have not uh, assigned myself or I have not uh, registered for any events as of yet that are upcoming. Uh, recordings. So once you register for a live event, uh, whether you actually went to the live event and took the whole course, or maybe you signed up for it and something happened at the last minute and you didn't make the course or maybe you made it halfway through or whatever. As long as you have registered for that event, uh, regardless of how much time you spent in the live event, once the event is over, you will then get uh, the recorded version. You'll get access to the recorded version of that particular event. So here you'll see uh, events that I've taken recently. So here's one that was on June 5th that I took. Um, here are all sorts of other different ones that happened in the past, and these will be available to you in your library for as long as you have an O'Reilly account. So think of it kind of like um, like a DVR you know, for your cable network or streaming service, right? You go and you DVR specific things uh, that you've watched or maybe that you didn't get a chance to watch and then they're available in your library. That's kind of similar with the live events. And let, let's talk about these live events. So what are they? So these are basically live courses with a live instructor and fellow O'Reilly subscribers uh, where you pre-register for an event ahead of time, has a set time and date where it happens. And you go and you attend that course uh, anonymously. You um, have act the courses generally run anywhere from one to four hours, depending on you know the level of the course. Uh, usually they're one day, they might be multiple days, depending on you know again what the course is all about. And these are on basically every possible topic you can imagine. Uh, and they happen Monday through Friday, all hours of the day. We try to be very uh, you know cognizant of the fact that a lot of our customers are from all different time zones across the across the earth and so we try to make you know like for very very popular 
courses. We will run them fairly regularly, and we may have one that's very friendly for East Coast here in the States, more friendly for Europe, for APAC, all that sort of thing. So we run them at different times. So here, once you go to our main events page, uh, and again, you can filter here if you like, you know, pick out maybe you're more interested in business topics or maybe there's specific technology that you're interested in. You can go and set up filters there. You can also set up a start time so you can see which ones are available in your area, um, you know, in your time zone. But if as you scroll down the list, so you'll see right now there are 367 live events on the calendar. So here you can scroll down and you'll see the ones that are happening, you know, imminently today, tomorrow, the next day. So here are the ones that are happening over the next couple of days. And you'll see lots of different topic areas here. So here's one that's coming up. So this is tomorrow, yeah, 18th is tomorrow. So this one is on uh, Amazon Web Services Networking Essentials. It's happening tomorrow from noon to 4 p.m. So let's say we're really interested in cloud and we're really interested in Amazon Web Services. So we'll see here. So this one's coming up tomorrow, noon to 4 Eastern time. There are 160 spots remaining. So each one of these is available uh, and open to 200 O'Reilly subscribers. Um, so think of it like as a giant lecture center with uh, 200 seats in the lecture center. You have your, your professor or your instructor down in the front, kind of similar thing here, but it's all virtual, obviously. So basically, uh, you come to this page and you, you see it's also being offered in September. Okay, so if like maybe that particular date is better for your schedule, you can sign up for either one of them. Uh, here, as you scroll down, you'll see there's some information on our instructor. A lot of these instructors you'll see on various different uh, live courses on our platform. You'll see lots of uh, familiar faces as you get used to our live event program. Here is some information on what you'll learn, how you can apply it and why this event might be for you. What should you know about Amazon Web Services before you take this? We may offer up some prerequisites. So here it's just basically saying some experience using AWS is probably a good idea. Here's some resources, maybe a clip of a video or a chapter of a book to read before you take the course. And then a breakdown of the schedule. <clears throat> so you know exactly what you're in store for for those couple hours. So if uh, you have that, time available on your calendar, you know, for either one of these, and uh, you're very interested in taking this course, basically you just hit sign up, you'll get added to the course registration, you'll get an immediate uh, email confirming your registration, you'll get, uh, you'll get a few emails leading up to the day and time, this one's tomorrow, so you may only get one. Um, and then uh, you also, after you hit sign up, uh, if like you do need to pull out of the register, if you maybe you can't, you know, you signed up for it, but you can't make it, uh, you can also withdraw from the course. But I usually urge most people that if you do sign up for it, uh, even if something happens and you can't make the course or, you know, maybe halfway through it, you get, you know, called into a meeting or something like that. Recording of that course that you can then view uh, at any time. Uh, at your leisure. The only thing that uh, about the recorded version is obviously you can't take part in the interactive part of the courses. And I'm going to show you uh, in, in a minute just what that looks like um, as I, I will go into one of our uh, one of my recordings to show you exactly how it works. But like I said, we do have a very robust calendar. And like I said, if you are more interested in something very, very specific, so let's maybe it's business, you're more interested in business topics. Um, you can actually go and just see the, the business events. So here I've just narrowed that list down to 50. And here you can see some of the different courses that are available for a particular, you know, for more business and soft skills topics. And again, if there's specific things you're like, maybe you're not interested in JIRA, or you're not interested in PowerPoint or critical thinking, you can keep narrowing this down and it'll keep just showing what you've kind of chosen there. But again, we have uh, what I always urge people to is like, 
obviously, you know, our events, we try to keep these as compact as possible because we know that people uh, have busy schedules and, and their job roles and whatnot. So we try to keep these two, you know, like I said, usually one to four hours, depending on the course. Some of they're all different. Um, we also, you can join one live. So here are courses that just started. You can usually join a course live if you have not already registered for it, about up to an hour into the course. So some of these, uh, you know, just started. And so you can join them live. But uh, it's always a good idea to browse the schedule and see, you know, kind of what's available. You may have a free week on your calendar, you know, a month from now where right now you don't have many meetings set up and your, your schedule is pretty open. And you maybe there's some training you want to do, like on a particular topic area. You can go and say, OK, well, that first week in August, uh, here's what's being here's what's on offer at O'Reilly and go and sign up for one of those. You can go even way into the future and see what's happening in September. Uh, we probably have stuff going into October, I would imagine, right now. We're pretty close to it. And you can go see what's on offer. Yeah, we're all the way to the end of, here we go, October. So so if you'd like I said, if you do have some free time in your schedule, you can go and see what's available for any specific week and go and pre-register for, for any, of these, uh, any of these events that are upcoming. So back to our recordings page. So here, like I said, these are courses that I took previously and I can go and I can look at any of these at any time. So here I'm going to go into this uh, Fundamentals of Powerful Communication in 90 Minutes, which I just attended. So here you'll see uh, this was on June 5th and this was a short one. This was an hour and a half. OK, so I, I can view the session video here. Uh, if I ever wanted to attend another live one, there's one upcoming on August 14th. So it gives you information on that. But let's take a look at the, at the video that was recorded. So here, this is what it looks like. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fundamentals of Power. So basically how it works before we start watching this is so when you do register for one of our events, uh, the day that it's supposed to begin, usually 15 minutes prior to the event starting, you'll need to be logged into your O'Reilly account. You'll see a little pop up that will come up on the main page saying that the uh, event that you registered for is set to begin. Would you like to join the live event? You click yes. You'll stay on O'Reilly, but you'll get opened up into the training room, which is basically what you're looking at right here. Uh, and there will be a media player here, which they will have the instructor live on camera. OK, you'll have the their slide deck here, which will be the lesson that they'll go through. Uh, you'll have the uh, the group chat box, which is right here. OK, so everybody can interact with each other and the instructor in an anonymous fashion. There's also a Q&A room as well, OK, which is right right here. There's also the, some of the resources that the instructor used that will be available right at the end of the course. So there, if there's maybe PDFs or a PowerPoint with things on it, slides and stuff. So that'll be there as well. So here, I'll just let this play for a short bit. To powerful think. communication in 90 minutes. So Allie and I always love starting with a game that we find very fun. So hopefully you're into some depth. And here on the media player, you can change, you can put closed captioning on, you can change the size of the media player, the speed, you know, volume and things like that. So there's uh, lots of different things that you can do uh, to play around with the uh, with the media player. But uh, that's basically how that works. So the, the instructor will be going through the lesson. Occasionally they will uh, drop in some like multiple choice questionnaires and things like that for some of the more technical live courses like you know programming language and things like that uh, there also may be an interactive um, part of the course as well there may be like a live coding environment so folks who are taking the course as the instructors going through the lesson they can actually go and do some live coding within the uh, the environment as well so there's that so those these can be very very interactive there are lots of fun and uh, I, I've taken lots of these in my time here at O'Reilly since we had this particular format and usually the attendees are very active in the chat box here so uh, so they're really good so I highly recommend these as a way of learning whether you're a technologist or, or maybe you're just a business person within the organization a manager so there's lots of leadership courses and you know how to work remotely and uh, agility and managing teams and you know, how to conduct interviews and all sorts of things that you can possibly think of we have topics on them so that's the live events and again like i said you can go ahead and you can um play around and filter the searches a little bit better so you can get exactly to the type of course that you are interested in taking. So if, as we go down the start learning button here, books is next. 
So like I mentioned before, books is the most popularly viewed um, content format on O'Reilly. It always has been. So here right now we have 48,000 books on the platform uh, from all the different publishers that we work with. Here you can just quickly, I'll just go through here. Wiley, Pact, A-Press, Pearson, uh, Dummies, Harvard Business Review, Peach Pit, Q, Barrett Kohler, Sam's, Cybex, Cisco Press, Josie Bass, so quite a lot of them quite a lot of publishers. So at any time, you know, if you're looking for something very, very specific, you can choose a topic. Uh, so maybe you're a data person. Okay, maybe you're looking for something from a very specific publisher, you know, maybe you want to just see O'Reilly books. You know, maybe you want to see something published in the last six months, right? So there's different ways to go ahead and refine that search. Um, so here are some of the most popular books. There we go. And again, you can change that at any time to pick any of the other different formats. Okay, you're also getting recommended live events here as well. So we just started adding recommendations here. So there's different ways to refine your searches here right from the book page. We go to interactive. So on the interactive page, we have labs and we have sandboxes. And uh, actually we have labs, cloud labs and sandboxes. So <clears throat> on the interactive page, basically what we're doing here is we're giving you content. And this is you know, great for uh, you know, developers and programmers and you know, IT folks. Um, as, a, as a safe place to go on our platform, we can actually go and program and experiment and, and learn like very, very specific tasks in a lot of very, very specific technologies. So here you'll see we have over a thousand different labs or interactive resources on our particular, on this page here. And here you can see a lot of the different topics that they come in. So you see three tabs across the top, labs, cloud labs, and sandboxes. So a sandbox is basically just, think of it just as a, like a child would go to a playground and sit in the sandbox, right? It's just a box with sand in it. You know, you bring maybe your pail and your little shovel or whatever little play tools you have, and you just go and try and create things. Well, it's kind of similar here uh, in the sandbox environment. So here you can see we have 36 of those, and basically they're all set up for some of the major programming languages and things and containers. So if you decide you want to go to the Java sandbox, you click in there, so it gives you difficulty. This is beginner, 10 minutes to you know set up and practice in here. What are sandboxes? They give you a configured environment to start playing and exploring using an unstructured learning approach. They're great for experimenting and trying samples. So you click on start. It opens up the environment. Okay, once it all fully loads. And basically all of our interactive content, whether it be a sandbox or a lab or a cloud lab, we give you an hour time limit to kind of play around and experiment in here. So here, basically, we're just going to get you started setting up the, the Java environment. So basically, and here's some information. Step one, compile. Okay, so we've done that. Okay, step two, execute. Now you can either just click on the box or you can type it in here yourself into the terminal, execute using Java app, okay, which we've done. So we've done that. So now we've actually helped you to set up the Java environment. So Java is preloaded in here. And now the end user can go ahead and they can start coding and practicing in Java. And like I said, that's basically what this is for. So for technology folks who are working on complex systems, it's not always a good idea to experiment on the code <clears throat> live in your own environment, right? Because you could break something that's currently uh, working uh, on your platforms and websites. So here on O'Reilly, you can actually go and, and work on that code here safely on O'Reilly and fine tune everything you're, you're doing till you know you have the code working correctly and then you can go implement it on your own servers. So that's basically what this is. It's just a place to go and experiment, learn and fine tune what it is you're, you're working on. Okay, so here once you are done, you can just leave. It does not save anything. So all of our interactive content, once you leave the environment, it does not save any of the work you did there. Labs are kind of the same thing, except here uh, we actually give you kind of step-by-step -step instruction on how to do very, very specific things in those languages here. So here's improving existing code. So this is another kind of beginner lab here. Here's some learning objectives and things like that. 
so here you'll see step one of four right so now it's um you get four steps so we're actually going to help and guide you on how to work this and what to do here so here you'll see information here um, whenever you notice that the cursor allows you to click on a button it'll actually run it for you or you can type it in yourself okay so So here you kind of just go through, you can take and you can copy into the editor. Okay. So here we're gonna give you four steps, what to do for this ex existing task. And again, you'll see the timer is up here as well. So the real difference between the, the lab and the sandbox again is with the, the lab, we're actually going to give you a uh, step-by-step -step instruction on how to get through this particular task. And then the difference between a lab and a cloud lab, again, the cloud labs are basically just on the cloud um, technologies like AWS and Microsoft Azure. Okay, so Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, two of the main cloud providers. Uh, what we give you with the cloud labs is you actually also get access to a live uh, Amazon Web Services account for an hour and a live Microsoft Azure account for an hour. And you can kind of toggle back and forth between doing some of the work, the tasks for each individual lab, either on our platform or in conjunction with our platform and on a, the Microsoft platform as well as the, uh, the Amazon platform. So here, if you click into here, you'll see it's very, very similar. So again, it gives you the same information on what, your, what the objectives are here, what you're going to experience. You click on start, it'll load the environment for you. So this is two steps. So it'll give you log into the AWS console. It'll give you information on how to load that up. And then it'll take you through you know, the lab and give you information. Again, you can choose to just click on these boxes or the end user can actually go and type all of this in and get used to actually typing in the code. And this particular lab has two steps. So very, most of the labs are very, very specific. They're not overly long and it's, it's broken down for very, very, specific and niche little things to do uh, within these technologies. So th this is not something you would probably immerse yourself in for hours. Obviously, it's only an hour time limit. And that's why, because they're all very, very little steps. Uh, and some of these are interconnected. So some of the, uh, especially the cloud labs, they will have, uh, and you'll notice when you go into the main cloud lab page, when you click on one, it'll give you like recommended follow-up for that particular lab. So there may be sets of like five or 10 that are all kind of interrelated. They'll take you from one task to another. But these are great for folks that are either learning the cloud or are already cloud architects and designers and looking to kind of fine tune and learn other little tasks within uh, either AWS or Microsoft Azure. We do have plans for Google Cloud at some point. Uh, that's probably down the line a ways, maybe either late this year or early next year. So more to come on that in the future. All right, courses. We have uh, recently added uh, something we call courses. We, we've long had this type of content on our platform, but we used to previously call these coursewares um, either learning pads or just video courses or videos. Um, we've decided to kind of go with this courses name because that's most of what the industry uses nowadays, you know, online learning, on-demand learning is generally called courses. So what we've done is we've looked at all of our previously known as learning paths and videos, and we've taken all of those and the ones that are really were always set up as courses, we now name them courses. Uh, so now what you see as videos on the uh, on the platform are basically like conference videos or like short video tutorials, not really set up like a course. Everything else now has been renamed courses. 
and we've added a and the learning paths have gone away we don't use that that term anymore and basically we've now set it up where you can actually go onto our platform and you can search for courses based on your role within your organization your job role your function your profession so what it is that you do and you can or maybe a, a role that you're looking to get into and you want to learn specific skills for that role you can actually go choose your role choose the skills you're going to learn and even choose the level that you're going to be at so here Let's go right so you get to this page to the courses page and you choose learn by role. And here you go and you see all the roles that we have set up and these are based on some of the more popular IT technology roles that are out there. We're going to continue to add to this. I think we have plans to add some more very, very soon. So here you kind of look through and you see, well, what is it that you do? So maybe you're a, maybe you're a data scientist. So I've chosen data scientist. And then it's telling me that there are 17 skills available. So we go and we down here and we click choose skills. So here are the skills for a data scientist, right? So you look them over and say, well, I definitely know I want to learn Python. Okay. I definitely know that I want to learn statistics and maybe you're also, um, you know, the machine learning is important and you know, you need to use containers or Hadoop and you've chosen data warehousing. So I picked so six skills. So I've saved my selections. Now it has gone and has found content courses that are based on the role that I chose and all the skills that I chose. Now we can choose the level. So let's say I've, I've just moved into this role, so I'll leave it a beginner, right? So here are all the, the beginner content, but I can also move it to intermediate, click apply, and it will then change and give us different courses, but I'm gonna leave it back at the beginner. And we just, this just happened like the other day. So now in addition to the, to the on-demand courses, these are the video courses, we now have added those live courses that I just showed you before. So now in addition to having uh, available here within the courses page, the on-demand courses that are available for my role, for the skills I'm looking to learn at the level I'm at, uh, you can now toggle back and forth between the live courses that are available or the on-demand courses. So here are the live courses for this particular role that are upcoming. Okay, at any time you can kind of choose and look at these like we did before. And then the on-demand courses. So here you'll see Python fundamentals, practical Python, machine learning, say so all sorts of courses that the platform has chosen for us based on the parameters that I set up. So here, let's just go and choose one. All right, so here's statistic for data science and business analysis. Okay, this is the publisher here. This was published in 2021. It's a four hour and 45 minute course. So we open that. So here, time to complete. Okay, publication date, some information about this video course. Okay, at any time we can click on start. And that's the great thing about O'Reilly. It's like with all the content that we have, you can choose to take anything from the beginning, whether it be a book or a video or a course or what have you or you can go right to table of contents page and you can go directly into any part of the video. So far, we have covered graphs that represent only one variable, but how do we represent relationships between two variables? In this video, we'll explore cross tables and scatter plots. And in addition, and also here to get the transcript of that, of this section of video as well, okay. Bit of a description as well on what each of these particular chapters contain uh, and then you'll see this add to playlist icon basically everywhere on our platform we'll go into that in just a couple minutes and that basically will allow you to save your own favorite content for for viewing later whether it be a, a clip of a video course a chapter of a book a section of a video or, or really anything right you can actually save it to a playlist you can create any number of playlists for your own personal viewing you can share your playlist and all that so it's a it's really a cool um, way to just kind of collect and store your own content and favorites and as you can see here uh, also at any time you can add something to a playlist or click watch right from here without clicking right in Okay, and at any time, if you wanted to change 
the level that you're at, you can go do that and it'll give you different. And, and some of these, some of the courses also will, they're like uh, multi-level. So some of them will take you and then it'll basically say it right there. It'll say, this is a beginner to intermediate course or an intermediate to advanced, that sort of thing. Because I know uh, levels are very important to a lot of people. So that's courses. And again, you get the great thing to, to toggle back and forth between the live courses that are available in the on-demand. The on-demand are available whenever you like. They're, they're basically on our platform, uh, ready to be viewed at any time. We have the certifications page, which I know is very important to a lot of our customers, especially those who are working uh, on the or on the government side who are working with uh, security and cybersecurity all the time. And they need to be, a lot of folks, IT folks need to be certified and, you know, like CompT or Cisco or what have you. So here you go to our certifications page, you select the vendor. So here are all the different vendors that have certification content on our platform. So you go basically pick out you know, one that you're interested in taking a certification course. And we actually don't give the certification exams on O'Reilly, but we basically, what we do is we give you all the tools to get ready to take a certification course with a CompTIA, with a Cisco, with an Amazon, with a Microsoft, or even with a Pearson, who uh, one of our publishing partners. So here I've chosen CompTIA, and then you pick the course that you're looking to study for. Okay, so maybe it's uh, Security Plus. So you choose Security Plus, you can choose a format. What type of format are you looking to learn from? I'll leave it as is right now, just so you can see all the different things that are available. So here, uh, the platform has curated, you know, live courses, on-demand courses, here's some books, there's an audio book, more books. So these are all some of the, all of the content that we have on our platform that will help you get ready for this particular CompTIA certification exam. But, you know, there are 15 of them. Most people aren't going to go through 15 different learning resources, right? They may, the question probably always comes up, well, what's the best out of all of this? So that's why we created the certification guide. So basically we have asked our experts here to take a look at all of those resources that came up on that search, but to put together for the end user, kind of like a greatest hits of what we have here. Think of like a greatest hits collection for your favorite band or artist, right? You just want the best songs. Well, here our experts have put together this certification guide, which has the best, most trusted resources out of all those selections that came up. So here you have a video course by Sari Green, who's one of our regular instructors for security and specifically CompTIA. Okay, there she is again. So here's another an upcoming live event that she's having. Here is a uh, best-selling exam cram book here's another the mike myers book also very very good seller for many many years so you've got a couple books here you've got a practice test an audio book okay the practice test basically uh our publishing partner pearson they do certification testing so they are a an authorized uh, certification tester for uh, some of these vendors so what we've asked them to do is put together practice tests that basically mirror the actual certification exam so once you come to our certification page here and you're looking to study for this particular CompTIA Security Plus certification, you maybe read a book or two, take an online course, and then come here and take the practice exam. So you basically, you would go here, you would launch practice exams. I'm going to switch over to the sharing of this tab. It'll open up a new browser tab. And here you'll get, um, usually it's right around 100 different exam questions that basically mirror what you will experience in the particular certification exam from either you know a Pearson or from CompTIA directly or whoever else. And you can go and you can set up all sorts of different parameters. You click start. Okay, so this has 90 questions. So you would go here and you answer any of the questions and whether you get it right or wrong, it'll give you an explanation as to you know why it's right or wrong. You can go and you can add notes to this. You can you know, review, save exam, grade the exam as you go through it. You would go through the exam and you can take this as many times as you like. And the, the whole is that you would then arm yourself with all of the tools you would need to make sure you are 100% ready to take that particular exam and pass it the first time. Because as we know, those uh, certification exams can be pretty costly. So you want to make sure that you know everything you need to know before you go and take them. And we like to think that we have all of that content that'll get you ready to do that. Okay. 
And like I said, we have lots of different uh, vendors here at the certification page where you can go and choose the right one for you. Again, based on who you're taking, you can go at any time you know, to the AWS page and see all the different certifications they have. O'Reilly Answers. Here you basically go, and uh, if you want to quickly just type up an answer or a question, I should say, and get an answer, what is chat GPT? And our platform will then serve up a direct answer to your question. And we generally give you eight different resources where it's pulling answers from. So right here, it'll be highlighted. Okay, it'll tell you exactly what ChatGPT is. Maybe if you're not happy, 100% happy with that answer from that book or video, you can click here. Okay, here's a, another segment here that explains that. Okay, from a book. And anytime you can go click learn more and go directly into that book or, or video and read a little bit more in depth and get more context. Uh, also from the answers page. You can go and see some popularly asked questions, right? So maybe your question has already been asked by lots of other O'Reilly members. So here you can go and say, oh, this is exactly what I was going to ask. So let's just click on that. And it'll give you your your answer there. So again, just to do a quick, simple search. So we kind of left this for last, but uh, let's say you are interested in chat GPT. Okay, so I did a simple search. It pulled up over a thousand results. Okay, here initially you'll see on the browse format, it's searching across all different content types. So you'll see books, courses, playlists, live course, you can then go, of course, and select the format that you're most comfortable with that you want to learn from. Uh, anytime you can kind of filter a little bit. So chat GPT as relating to software development, that, that sort of thing. So you can go and narrow that down. Maybe there's a specific publisher you're interested in. So you can go there and continue to narrow your search. So lots of ways to search. We're, we're trying to make it easier for folks to find the content that most interests them. That's why we always emphasize like picking your favorite topics and, and going to the topics page and, and looking at the recommendations on the main page. Because again, that's basically based on uh, what your browsing history is on your platform, what you're reading, what your videos you're, you're watching, courses you're taking, that sort of thing. So we know everybody has varied interests, but it, it does really make sense to go and choose out those topics when you first sign on to O'Reilly. Uh, this way it makes the, the your experience on our platform much, much more personal. But the, the basic you know, thing that most people do is they go to the search box and they go and they start searching and refining their search and finding things that are of interest to them. So once you've kind of done all that, you can, of course, go and you can click into uh, any particular thing that you found here. So let's open this up to courses. So let's say, you know, you open this up and you really like this. This looks of interest. You can, of course, go and save it to a playlist. Um, so it looks like here I already have a chat GPT playlist, so I can go and add it to that particular playlist. Um, and then you can go to the main page, or you can go to the profile page. You can go right to your playlist page. You can also access that from the main page. And here you'll see all the different playlists that I've created. So here's the chat GPT. Um, you'll see some of these say followers. Uh, let's find one that has a, you'll, this one. So this particular one says lock. There's a little lock sign here. So when I set this particular playlist up, anytime you create a playlist, it automatically defaults to private. So right now, only myself can see these, this collection of content that I put here. So it looks like I put two uh, DevOps books here. Um, at any time I can add to this, right? But unless I change the sharing functionality here, 
okay it'll it'll remain private so that means nobody can view this uh, from within o'reilly anybody who's browsing uh, playlists that have been made public for anybody to access nobody will be able to see this one until i go into the share button here and i can just click on that so company o'reilly media staff only so now anybody within o'reilly can see my little devops playlist i can actually also go and uh, email because now that i've made it public within o'reilly i can it has a unique URL, so I can go copy that link. I can email it to someone. I can put it in a, a, a Slack message or Microsoft Teams and send it to anybody. And then when they get that URL or they discover this playlist uh, on their Discover tab on the playlist page, instead of seeing a share button here, they'll see a follow button. So they can then choose and go follow that. And then anytime that I add to the playlist, they'll get access to all that content as well. The only thing they can't do, so if... Uh, let's say Anne was following this particular playlist of mine, uh, she can't actually manipulate any of the content in here. She can't add to it. She can't take away from it. If she found some additional DevOps content that would be great for this playlist, she can go and bug me and say, hey, can you add this uh, video course or you know this uh, whatever it might be to the playlist because it would really benefit the team. Maybe I shared this with my team. So then I would have to go add to it to, uh, to increase the content in that playlist. Or she can go directly to this little button over here, click on duplicate, and she could then like kind of clone and, or duplicate that playlist that I've created, make a new one with her as the creator, and she can go and title it something completely different. She can add a description in there, whatever she'd like, and, and click duplicate playlist. She would then duplicate that everything that I had in that playlist and make a brand new playlist with her as the creator, and then she could either keep it private or she can then share it with uh, other colleagues within her organization or within her, her division, right? Uh, and, and that's how you kind of get around that. So it's a, it's a the playlist creation is really good, not only to organize your own content, but also in like a team building atmosphere or even at an organizational level. So maybe there's a learning and development group, they wanna create a playlist of content, maybe their the organization is looking to build better leaders. You can go and set up content and playlist, share it with everybody who has an O'Reilly account, or maybe there's a specific team, they're doing like a new project, there's a new uh, software, piece of software that's being worked on, maybe they need to learn on the latest um, version of Python, so the department head will put together a playlist of a couple of items, maybe a video course, maybe a book or a chapter of a book, because you can get pretty granular on what you put in the playlist, you can add just chapters of books, sections of videos, not, not you don't have to do the whole book or video or course or what have you. And then share that with the team. So then they know exactly what the manager wants them to be looking at on the platform to learn what they need to learn to get through this project that's uh, just come up. So I highly recommend creating playlists again, not only for yourself, but for your, your colleagues and, and teammates and whatnot. And it's really good for managers to, to share information that they would like their folks to be learning from on O'Reilly. Uh, we also have a mobile app which is uh, O'Reilly and it's available for iOS and Android. And that will allow you to do much of what I showed you uh, on the mobile app. You can also uh, download and cache content for offline viewing as well, including videos and books and audio books and things like that. And I do wanna show you the what's new tab. So again, here, this will usually be some of the new things that are coming up on the platform. So we've got the courses, which I just showed you. Uh, early releases will probably always be here. We have a nice program on O'Reilly where once we uh, sign new authors for new books, we put those books right on the platform as they're being fine-tuned and written and whatnot. And in many cases, some of these books won't be actually published for the rest of the universe for six months, eight months, a year, two years from now. So here you'll see books that are on our platform on a lot of new and emerging technologies and topics and ideas that are here on O'Reilly for our subscribers that aren't going to be released to the general public for quite a while from now. So, and you'll see some, some are, you know, more fully baked at this point in time. So this one is already 750 pages complete. This one's only 72. So if you're really someone who is interested in keeping up on all the latest and greatest things happening in technology, our early release program is a really good place to go and kind of see what's being written and what's put together and, and add these to a playlist and follow along with these books as they're being written uh, by these authors and by these experts. Also here, you'll see direct link to the
we used to have a whole separate conference business. Uh, and when, when the pandemic hit a couple of years ago, we decided to obviously uh, do away with our live conference business, which we would do in places like London and New York and San Francisco and Chicago and Beijing and all over creation. We would have these very, very specific conferences on different technology topics. And they would be like, you know, three to five day events. We would have uh, keynotes and sessions, learning sessions. We would have a conference floor with exhibitors and all that, just like a regular conference. And we decided to bring that onto our platform in a much more condensed virtual environment. So now you have these what we call super stream events, which are again on very specific topics. So you'll see we have an artificial intelligence super stream conference, or um, we've got cloud, data, infrastructure ops, security, software architecture, software development. So at any time when these do come up, uh, any of our Safari subscribers or O'Reilly subscribers can register for any of these like they would any of other or other live events. So here, this one is coming up on September 20th. And you would register for these just like you would a live course. So here, this is a four hour condensed super stream event. Again, with different here, you'll see kind of what's gonna happen during this particular event. This is the host, there'll be guest speakers, there'll be sessions. Um, and right now there are 150 spots remaining for this particular online super stream event. So again, just another type of event. So not only do we have the regular instructor led courses, but we also have these these kind of like speaker series, these live uh, conferences that happen right on our platform as well. And also we have the expert playlist. So these are playlists. So in, in addition to you being able to create your own playlist, uh, you can actually view the ones that have been put together by our experts. And this is really great when you're someone who comes to O'Reilly and says, well, I wanna learn about this but I don't really know where the best place is to start. There's all these different resources. So here you can go and you can find expert playlists that have been created on very, very specific topics by our experts. So here's uh, Sari Green. She's created this expert playlist on CompTIA Security Plus. So here she has handpicked five events for someone that is looking to learn CompTIA Plus. If you're maybe you're someone who is uh, interested in learning Python, you can just do a simple search on Python and you can actually choose playlists and you can choose the playlist type and just go to see exactly which, you know, what we have on our platform, expert playlist created by our experts. So here's becoming fluent in Python, three ways to learn Python, Python distilled, Python for DevOps, beginning Python resource center. So this might be something if you're someone new to Python and you really don't know where to start here, click on this particular playlist. You'll see there's 459 followers of this. And this will, will help you start to learn Python from a more beginner level. So again, lots of places to start, lots of things to learn, lots of different topics, both business and technology. Um, but hopefully what you got out of today is that we are really working towards personalizing our platform more for you. Whereas once you do log into O'Reilly, it's basically going to help you along with your journey rather than just kind of bombard you with content right off the bat. Uh, here, the more you start exploring within O'Reilly, the more personal it becomes, the more recommendations you get, you know, showing where you left off, going to your highlights page, your history, playlists you've created, live events you've signed up for, you know, new in your topics. So at any time topics you've chosen, here, we're going to recommend content for you based on those. Here are recommendations based on your browsing history. Here are some of the most popularly viewed titles across all of our customers. So just, we're really trying hard to uh, make it as personal to your experience as possible and uh, make it just that much more easier to find the content that's relevant for you. So with all that being said, I went way longer than I thought I was going to, but let's uh, open up to any questions that we might have. Lane, go ahead. So this is really cool. I'm super excited about um, using these resources, especially as they uh, so many of them relate to coding. Um, that's something that um, the Wiesbaden Library has definitely tried uh, to get into. Um, I'm also wondering about um, maybe makerspace resources, uh, if there are classes perhaps on um, 3D printing um, design or maybe even how to use Arduinos. Um, 
that sort of thing, uh, if, if this is the kind of resource that would be appropriate for those things. Yeah, we should have plenty of that sort of thing on here. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of just doing some searching, uh, but there's plenty of that. I mean, you know, if you remember Maker Magazine, that was actually owned by O'Reilly. Uh, it's on it's its own separate uh, company right now, but uh, we we do have we should have some a lot of that on here as well. So yeah, I would say that is that should all be available on here as well. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. Okay. Well, I thank you all for joining us today. Hopefully, uh, uh, like myself, uh, a lot of what I showed you today and navigated through is also kind of brand new to me because we just launched this, the, the whole new look and feel of the platform has changed drastically over the last, not even week. So uh, this was this was great for me because a lot of this stuff I'm kind of experiencing also for the first time. But yeah, we've, uh, we've really, the platform has really changed recently to to become much much more personal for the end user and i think the more the end user goes on o'reilly the more the platform will recognize their learning patterns and their interest and really what they'll see every day when they log in will be much much more set up for them and their interests and and uh, the learning that they want to do as opposed to before like one of the main things we always got as you can imagine with so many resources on the platform it can be daunting for some people to try and figure out exactly what it is they're looking for so I think we've taken steps to make it much, much easier um, to find the type of learning and the type of topics that uh, is relevant to the individual. So I think uh, for those new users, I think they will really enjoy what they see here.